Good afternoon. My name is Pabne Nyakon. I work at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Ghana, and my presentation is focused on the rural water service models in Ghana. The outline will be as follows. I'll start with the background, a little bit on the rural water governance, and then I'll focus on the rural water service models. And there are three main models, community management, the private sector, the public sector, and then I will conclude. In Ghana, water supply is in two forms, urban water, which is provided by the former utility, Ghana Water Company Limited. Rural water is mainly provided by community management, and recently we also have a public utility. With respect to coverage, coverage increased from 30% in 1988 to 75% in 2010 and to 86% in 2020. And as at the end of 2020, we still have 3.7 million rural inhabitants without access to basic water services. And let's all remember our aim is to achieve universal service and we want everybody to have a safely managed service. This means we still have a lot of work to do. If we look at the roles and responsibilities, we have the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources with responsibility for policy formulation. We have the Community Water and Sanitation Agency that was established to facilitate the provision of safe water to rural communities and small towns. We have the Water Resources Commission for regulation of the water resource. And we have the local government that is the district assemblies, municipals, and they have a responsibility for the development of the town and communities. And that includes the provision of water and sanitation facilities. We also have the community representatives, water and sanitation management teams, and they have responsibility for managing wash in their communities. If we look at how rural water service models in Ghana has evolved, we can trace it from 1968 when we had a centralized utility, the then Ghana Water and Sewage Corporation, and they were responsible for both urban and rural water. At the end of the International Drinking Water and Sanitation Decade, we realized that rural water had been marginalized First, because at that time, the rural population was around 65 to 70%, but coverage was only 30%, whereas urban coverage was in the 80s. Again, the utility had a staff of 4,500, and less than 50 were in the rural water department. So at the end of the decade, sector reforms were initiated that resulted into the separation of urban and rural water supply and rural adapted community ownership and management as the main approach to accelerate coverage and also ensure sustainability. Community management first started by focusing on the point systems where the water and sanitation management teams could do all the work. As they started looking at the pipe schemes, they started recruiting staff and with time, they realized that that was still not enough. So it got to a point where community managed systems delegated the operation and maintenance to the private sector. This continued until 2017, when the need to set up a public utility was realized. And Community Water and Sanitation Agency has started managing pipe schemes as a utility. And what we realized is that all the changes were in response to the issues and the challenges prevailing at that time. We will now look at the main management models and have a look at it in detail. As I did indicate, at the end of the International Drinking Water and Sanitation Decade, the National Community Water and Sanitation Strategy was prepared and it recommended community-based management, which was part of the broader reform. The strategy was to ensure sustainability through community ownership and management, community decision-making in the design of water facilities, active involvement of women, 
private sector provision of goods and services and public sector promotion and that is the work of community water and sanitation agency so for community management it started with the point source systems where the wsmts could operate and maintain for pipe schemes staff were recruited and the wsmt was managing the staff and making sure they were doing their work in all cases asset ownership was with the district for complex and technically challenged systems delegation to the private operators started so community based management with delegation to the private operators and for the delegation to the private operators is currently serving around 150000 and community management with recruited staff 3.8 million and for community management with the point systems we have almost 33,000 water point systems serving a population of around 9 million. The main challenge with community management had to do with the voluntary nature of the work provided by the WSMTs, capacity issues, difficulty in attracting expertise, and as a result, community management reached a performance ceiling with respect to functionality and other activities. And also with the delegation to the private operators under community management, the private operators were only responsible for operations and maintenance. So provision of infrastructure was not included. So now let's look at the second model. So the second one is the private sector model where the private sector will sign an agreement with a district assembly as a local agreement, local authority, and the agreement will be for directly managing a pipe scheme or to build, operate, and transfer. In this case, major maintenance, repairs, and rehabilitation rest with the private sector, and even in some cases, NGO. A typical example is what Safe Water Network is doing. They are managing over 150 water stations, seven, about half a million inhabitants. And with this model, they are cases where they have to provide the infrastructure and that really helps government since government will not have to look for money to provide infrastructure the last model is the public utility model and in ghana that is being managed by the community water and sanitation agency over the years they realized the shortcomings of the community based management related to technical capacity and also in some cases political interference so cwsa is seeking parliamentary approval to provide services as a water utility company focused on the small town systems they are currently managing 170 pipe schemes which were previously under community management and is serving a population of 1.2 million so they take responsibility for operations, maintenance, and major repairs. In conclusion, the reform process is still ongoing. And with respect to the utility model, some clarifications are still required, especially with respect to the responsibilities of CWS as a utility and that of the district. We also have to resolve the issue of rural water regulation. There is a regulatory vacuum that has to be addressed and this will be addressed as part of the reform. So the rural water management models have been changing in response to challenges that are prevailing. And it's essentially to address the issue of sustaining existing services as well as expanding services to achieve universal coverage in a sustainable, effective, and efficient manner. Thank you all for the attention and for listening. We're looking forward to the engagement where we discuss the issues from the presentation. Thank you.